But after a couple of months, the points come, uh, the, the things come out evident. When you start a startup, maybe your parents, your family, your friends are very, very, very energetic and enthusiastic. But when they see after several months, after one year, no profit is coming in, then they start doubting you. And this is the problem that deter a lot of people like us to start their own venture. So your plan will be something in reality you will reach your goal in some other way. There are several cases where you start a company with one product or service in your mind or and then dive into something completely different. So flexibility is one of the key options. And the people who want to start their own company as a startup, so of course have one thing in common that they all value the freedom above everything. So the whole concept of taking all the steps for them yourself has a different uh, has a different motivation instead of working for a big company. Now, however, there is some other points related to entrepreneurship in the heavy industry compared to the standard startup. As I said, two computers in a garage. That's that was I was saying. First of all, it is heavily capital intensive, as you all know. So you can, uh, for a startup, all you need is several computers, a few people, some maybe your friends, you don't have to pay them salary. But if it's heavy industry, it's capital intensive. Even if you look for the smallest of your heavy industry, there used to be small lead shops or machining shops in small lens in Calcutta in the past. Even if a lead ma a machine, a lead cost a lot of money. So buying something requires an investment then the instability if you read uh, newspapers like ft financial times or the economist at certain times you will find that in recent past the commodity prices commodities like iron ore oil gas uh, gold silver grains these things have fluctuated immensely I believe in Indian context, you all know how much big problem uh, Indians are facing related to the price hike of petrol and diesel. This is not to be said. And this is all due to the price hike in the international market. Of course, after the price hike, government says take some actions which may or may not be conforming to the industry, uh, to the interest of the public. I am not going into that discussion right now, but however, the commodity, the volatility of this market, which are traded overseas, are very, very instable. And finally, experience. Experience plays quite a role in the heavy industry because heavy industry is something which is related with a lot of social aspects, a lot of safety issues, which one cannot really have uh, if he doesn't have the experience. So this is something a sector which I am not talking that you can start from today, but maybe you have to take your time, think in your mind for the next couple of years, three years, four years, something like that, and then jump into after taking a lot of preparation. So this is the point I was discussing. Like the typical Silicon Valley startup, in Silicon Valley, if you see that the guys who have the most kind of prestige or who like to show off, they all say, okay, I dropped out from uh, Colorado or I dropped out from Princeton, etc., etc., and started my venture. Now, in heavy engineering sector, that doesn't work because if you are dropping out from your course, your study, and start your own venture, you are missing a huge deal. And that is something your completion of the education, which is extremely of utmost importance in this field. Let's say if you are a very good coder and if you want to do kind of an online shop which sells garments from a local boutique, you really don't need all the studies at all. You don't really need a degree. If you have coding skills, that's all. You can start it, but that's not something we are talking about. Now, second question, right after completing the education, 
you can jump into heavy engineering sector? No, extremely difficult. The only way it works that if you have some previous experience, maybe your father, maybe your uncle, maybe your grandfather uh, has some business in this issue, you're seeing this from the childhood and you have some idea. Only then you can jump in, but otherwise it's not very feasible to jump in because you need an experience, you need the idea of safety, you need the idea of finance, you need the idea of banking to jump in. After a few years of work experience, yes, ideal. The reason is after a few years of working experience, you can identify what are the problems in those fields and then you can jump in. It is like getting the knowledge from that company having a market knowledge and find out where is the problem located. Starting a company or any business goes on one particular thing that you have to offer something to others that others cannot. It has to be something new. Even if the little grocery store in your, in, in, in your area where you buy every day flour and sugar from them has one advantage that offers something that the others don't have. They are very near to you or you have got a very good personal relationship from them. So that's why you went to the go to them. If you're willing to buy a new product, you are looking for something that hasn't been done before. So you have to offer the world something new. Now, let's have an example of heavy engineering sectors that we know there, there are much more like I have deliberately ruled out the sectors related to FMCG and food processing because those are completely outside my ball game. I cannot tell you more insights, but those are kind of part of it, like big conglomerates like Nestle and everything are there. And also there are smaller companies like the companies which make, uh, for instance, sugar from sugarcane. That's also a kind of heavy industry. So mining, Steel and metals, power, machine tools, chemicals, textiles. These are the examples of heavy engineering sector. Now, what do we have in mining? Mining is something which right now we see as a heavy cost intensive operation. But several years ago, when there are several kinds of minings. One is called captive mining and the other one is called merchant mining. Captive mining is you have your own steel making or copper making plant and you have your own mine. You can use the product from that mine itself to make copper or steel, something like that. However, merchant mining is something more interesting. In previous day, years, uh, before independence, the coal mines, the iron ore mines used to belong to public, uh, used to belong, not public, sorry, used to belong to private uh, companies and private people. After the independence, after several reforms, government took control of them and either took control of the mines directly or sold it to the lease to several people. And there was a time that people got in India, the mining, uh, the metal, the mines at throwaway prices. And right now they are actually fill the reach from the mining in the last years. So those days of minings in India are gone. Right now, mining is a cost intensive issue. But where you can get mining in such a good deal in Africa, there are certain mining, certain mines, certain mining companies, which you can really lease at a very, very less price, maybe at the price of buying a flat in Calcutta and start your mining business there. Then steel and metal. Steel and metals is something, again, uh, looks very difficult. I believe so some of you have seen steel plants in your life and you can see how much of a huge operation it is. But remember the big guys like Mittal or Jindal, they didn't start from making that huge steel plants. The father of Mittal, Lokinaran Mittal, who used to be, who is right now, heads Arcelor Mittal, the biggest steel conglomerate in the whole world. He used to be a scrap dealer, steel scrap dealer in Baliganj. And Mittal started his journey in scrap dealing. And based on the money he accumulated from steel scraps and selling products, he, I assume he bought his first plant in South Africa. 
uh, and the Mittal, the process of buying plants in Mittal was very interesting. So he bought only bought he didn't invest for new steel plants. He only bought old steel plants at a throwaway price, like maybe 100 price of its total uh, foundation process, and then started operating that. So it is all coming on together how you start with a small amount of money and grow gradually and gradually and gradually, and then start acquiring more things. Since you are the students of electrical and in engineer and electronic sector here, I can actually see a very, very good line of correlation between electrical and metal sector. I think most of you know about the electrical steel or the transformer steel. This is a very, very special type of steel. This is called a, gray, a cold rolled grain oriented. And it is used in transformers to, uh, for, to, to, for the core loss. And it has several grades. Now, almost 90% of this kind of transformer steel in India is imported. And there is a huge, huge demand of it. So if you think, since you're in, you're in this stream, if you know companies like this who make transformer course in India, and if you can find out very good steel exporters from countries like China, from countries like Japan, if you can import transformer steel here, that's also a very good business. And that starts with steel here. So these are some of the ideas that we can talk about. We can start brainstorming all the time, but now there are, other, as I was saying, that the disadvantages, heavy engineering versus software-based startups, longer return period, because nothing happens before two years or three years. You have to have minimum this much of time to have your return. It's very difficult to raise capital because if you go for the typical angel investors or uh, venture capital companies, they are sometimes ready to finance the startup based uh, companies, but for heavy industry, they are not ready to willing. You need a larger team. It will not work with two partners. It will take more. And finally, there are legal and government issues. So as you know that as we have all seen in West Bengal, we have seen the problems that took place in Nondigram, we have seen the problems that took place in, in Shingur. So these are the things we also have to keep in mind, but this really comes after a long, long phase when you have established yourself as a big company. But even if you, if you are willing to start a small chemical making plant or a small lathe or machine shop, there are requirements related to noise pollution. There are requirements related to water pollution, how you dispose of your scrap, how much you have to put here, how much you can make noise, what will be the decibel? Well, these things have to be kept in mind. And all of these things require some permits from the government. Now, advantages. Fewer competition, yes. If you, I'm sure that the people who think about becoming an entrepreneur come very, very, very seldom come into the way of starting something in the heavy engineering sector. So that's why you have fewer competition. So if you are a master of your field, if you have a good network, then your competition is very less. Higher respect, of course, because